33 minutes past the hour. It is the Jeff Santo Show that you are tuned into. Coming to you live from the uh, South Coast here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, we're in blue today. Navy blue and light blue. You know, light blue is always Bernie's color. And, uh, of course, um, navy blue is, you know, always a, a Democratic color, too. So we're all in as we're going blue from Washington State to Wisconsin to right here to Massachusetts. And we start out west. We normally start and end out west. From the 206, he is a man that doesn't fly over the big buildings and faster than a speeding bullet, but he is our renaissance man. He is uh, our friend who is the executive director of Democracy Watch News, a great musician, and a big activist uh, for progressive causes. Mr. Mark Taylor Canfield starts us off on this Friday edition of the Jeff Santos Show early in the WA with a big W. Yeah. Starting us off, Mark. And, uh, she has her oh own guitar. Oh my god! Oh my so god! To, you become a. An I went act. to trading musician, <laughs> and uh, the guys at trading musician who are these really great musicians in Seattle, they hooked me up with this mini guitar for my marionette. So we performed on stage at the Nectar to rave reviews. I think people liked her more than me, Jeff. But that, so I'm getting a little bit jealous. But and what, then we what's also. This, took, uh, what's this individual's name? Spookarena. Spook Arena. Arena. So, yes. Yeah, so her band is I called Spooky in the Spook Arenas, and she plays some hot guitar. She gets out there on stage with me and rocks out uh, as my marionette. And we did Trolloween too, which you know this was Halloween, Jeff. So <laughs> we right, did Trolloween, yeah. and uh, she rocked out to the crowd. We had a good time. So Trolloween is something that the Fremont Arts Council puts together. It's a really great group of people here in Seattle in the Fremont neighborhood, and I'm a member. And we put on great things like the solstice parade in the summer and uh, a winter solstice uh, event as well. And then also we do this thing called Trolloween because there's a sculpture, a very famous sculpture in Seattle that a lot of you probably don't know about, but it hides underneath the Fremont Bridge and it's in the shape of a troll. And it's from that old story about the troll under the bridge and the oh, Billy yeah. Goats Gruff or whatever. Growing up with the troll, sure. Every year the Fremont Arts Council puts on an event there and we had these great, great Brazilian dancers, which I'm sure right. Juliana would have loved to hear because she's from Sao Paulo. By the way, there's crazy right, stuff right. going on. Right. Right. And what about, about the Silva, huh? Yeah, well, all, all I want to tell you is that uh, me and, and uh, Spook Arena had two great shows, one at the Nectar for the Mojam Monday Night Jam, which was incredible. We filmed that, so that'll be up at YouTube soon. And then we also hung out with these Brazilian dancers in this percuss percussion troupe in Seattle called Vamola who are mind blowing. I mean, Jeff, they are so high energy and their costumes are so beautiful. So we just marched around Seattle with that group and then did a show with the Nectar. And it was a great uh, Halloween in Seattle. You know, it didn't rain, which is really shocking, but uh, we had some great performances. So I just wanted to share that with you, that Seattle is alive well, and happening when it comes to the all, music scene. All the Portuguese speakers there in Brazil, move to buying. It means very good. <laughs> hey. I wanted to it's congratulate you on being on the radio in Massachusetts. Yay. Oh, yes. Smart people <laughs> yeah. in Massachusetts. Good to be back. Thank you. Good to be back. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Our friends at 980 WCAP. You can listen online around the country at, uh, at 980WCAP.com. And, uh, yes, we're very happy and open to uh, extend this uh, uh, across the country as we move forward. Of course, we're in Wisconsin, 3 to 6 a.m. Maybe we'll be in Seattle one of these days, hopefully sooner rather than later. We've been talking about that for a while. But, uh, hey, yes. there's a new year, and there's uh, lots riding on the election. we got to talk about Patty Murray in Washington State in, in a second. And uh, there's, hey, you know, come Wednesday, this could be uh, a celebratory show, or it could be, you know, how do we move on from, you know, the beginning of fascism. So, it's going to be very, very fascinating next uh, 72, 96 hours uh, to see how this all unfolds. So, Mark, I mean, I, I tend to believe that the, the people of Seattle, uh, which, of course, is the biggest city in Washington state, will come out and vote for Patty Murray. 
you know, is she perfect? Is she savant or is she uh, Miss Jayapal? No, in her politics. Uh, you know, she's more uh, maybe middle of the road, but she's far better than Smiley, far, far better than any Republican. And so people got to come out and vote for Miss Murray and, uh, you know, get her revved up. And of course, she ran and won in 1992 as the woman in tennis shoes and sneakers. So uh, we need to get that spirit back out. What's the latest over there in that race? By the way, I have my ballot right here. This is your Washington State ah. ballot. And, okay. uh, you have to sign the back, folks. So anybody in Washington State, make sure that you sign right here and that you sign it with the same name and the same initials that you used on your signature for your voter registration because you don't want anybody to challenge your vote. Uh, but you should mail them in today if you're in the I Western know. States. Mail them now. Do not wait. Do not pass go. Do not, uh, you know, collect $100, whatever. Just keep, you know, get it to the drop box if you're near one or get it in the mail today because you can't wait. Don't wait until the day before. Uh, remember, there's no postal service on Sundays. And so be careful about that. Anyway, uh, I think Patty Murray has a good chance of winning, but uh, Tiffany Smiley has definitely made up some ground in the polls. If this was a Formula One race with Mac, world champion Max Verstappen, <laughs> I would say, here comes Fernando Alonso around eighth place. Now he's in second place. Is he going to win? Is he going to win? Is he going to win? So it's getting close to the wire. Um, but I think Patty Murray will probably uh, – when I'm not going to make that prediction though, because I remember 2016. I remember talking to you yeah, the very no, next day. No, in it, was, it was very bad. So, you know, interestingly enough, MSNBC was talking just about the Patty Murray race uh, as you came on. So there's 30 seconds ago. In fact, they have a reporter who's there live now. Um, so, you know, hey, we're uh, our I friends in MSNBC are catching up to me uh, here with the yeah. uh, great MTC. I've been pitching articles and trying to uh, wake some people up. Politico was the only group that finally was a, did, a, did an article about it. But I'm, th I'm telling p people, you know, keep a close eye on this. And uh, by the way, the uh, uh, latest development on that is that there are these new ads. Oh, they're so insidious against Patty Murray, uh, where this, this right, -wing, right wing group is running these ads and they're called, call Patty Murray and thank her for... And then you can guess what they put in there. You know, high crime, inflation, right. call Patty Murray well, and thank her. Same playbook that's going on anywhere around the country. It's crime. It's, you know, it's the Biden inflation. It's the Biden crime plan. You know, it's, it's the same thing. It, it goes on. We, I was watching a debate last night in Rhode Island for governor, you know, and, and they, were, they were taking the, the Democratic uh, person to task. In fact, you know, it's now it's now pretty real. I don't know what this woman smiley, where she's from, if she's an import, but what the Republicans have done, you know, again, not many people have called them out on it, but they import these, these, um, mainly female candidates, uh, from other parts of the country just to sort of get them to run. And they put a lot of money behind them and they think, Oh, these are new young women. Let's look at them because they're all attractive. And that's the game plan. You know, this is what's happening in Arizona with Carrie Lake. She was a news anchor. You know, she never really did anything outside of just read the teleprompter. You know, she couldn't do a show like this yeah. one. And she doesn't have any thoughts except what Donald Trump tells her to say. So this is the problem. Yeah. And but, you know, people are people are trying to trying to do this. I mean, they got Republicans, I guess, wisely, you know, are trying to, you know, get somewhat of the female vote, which overwhelmingly went to Democrats last time. You know, yeah. <laughs> all I can say about Tiffany Smiley is the Republicans are, you caught, you, you did catch on to something which I've been talking about for a long time too, is that uh, traditionally, or, and even according to the Republican pollsters themselves, uh, traditionally in Washington state, women running for high office, whether it's governor, senator, Congress, are usually 20 points ahead of any um, male Republican. So the, the Republicans were smart in running a woman and they, they really, you know, they put her through the Hollywood treatment. She looks like a movie star now, not, not so much when she first started, but you know, there's a lot of makeup and hairdo, oh, yeah. the whole thing. Clothes. So let's face it, Patty Murray is somebody that I, you know, obviously uh, hope wins and, and I'm not going to, you know, hesitate on that, but yeah, she's, she's not, not as exactly friendly to the TV camera as, as yeah. Smiley is. Yeah. I mean, no, I mean, even the name, I mean, they, they make up the name too. I mean, you know, it's, I, this, I, this, is, this is what they is do. Is that from his Saturday Night Live? Isn't that the guy? Things. 
He's not the guy in the sweater who's always talking about, per, you know, positive affirmations, Mr. Smiley or whatever. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. she sounds like she sounds like a character <laughs> in The character, Simpsons. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. Matt Greening, who's from Seattle, by the way, and went to my school. You know, uh, he should make a character called Tiffany Smiley just for The, the Simpsons because she's perfect for it. Yeah. She is a character. She kind of overacts sometimes uh, when she does the crocodile tears. But um, other than that, she does look pretty good. She's a little bit frenetic at times, but I noticed the, the latest ad they put out with her and her husband, who was wounded in Iraq, by the way, and is blind. Mm -hmm. So she uses that quite a lot in her campaign just to prove that she's patriotic and she's not a crazy insurrectionist, which we're still not sure because she's still, you know, she publicly said on her website during the primary that she questioned the election of Joe Biden. So. Uh, Jay Inslee, in my one of my latest videos, you can see up at YouTube, had a response to that. He said, anyone who doesn't even recognize that Joe Biden is the president of the United States has no business being in the United States Senate. Help. Come on, folks. Get out there. Stop this. You know, he's very concerned. So is yeah. Pramila Jayapal. Elizabeth Warren was in town. Kamala Harris was here, uh, you know, snubbing for Patty Murray. So obviously the Democrats want to make sure that this 30 year incumbent wins. She's always had a safe seat here. And the Republicans are, you know, they're playing the spoiler. They're they're thinking like, yeah, let's get him because she's But I tell you, I think people are gonna come out and I don't know what you're hearing on the streets, but I think that whether it's the issue of choice, whether it's the economic issue, whether what happened with Pelosi uh and her husband over the over the weekend, and then people like Carrie Lake, again, the the Republican nominee for governor laughing about this. And we saw this with Taylor Green. Uh, in the last 24 hours. Oh, yeah. This to me shows the character. I mean, that's and, terrible. And that's that's, that's really the nice. thing, Mark, that to me is disgusting. And with a capital yeah. D, Democrats should call yeah. them on that. And I think in Arizona, they should be running an ad about what Miss Lake has done. They'd be stupid not to, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that the Republican fascist element has kind of overshot their their goal here and um, and have shown themselves to be extremists because as our, as far as I can tell, I mean, there have been some uh, Democratic leaning, Democratic Party leaning ads that were, were not as well scripted as I would like to see. The messaging was a little bit strange or confusing, but I think that when they say, at least in Washington state, it's working on a couple congressional races too. When they say that this person is an extremist, then people do get a little concerned. Even Republicans start to worry, oh man, you know, they're dragging us through the mud again. And oh, wow, well, yeah. you know, I don't want to be hanging out with these right wing crazy. So, you know, it does cause people concern. And it also probably gets more of the typical uh, Democrat voter out because in the past they would think, Patty Murray has a safe seat. Why should I vote for her? Look, Pramila Jayapal uh, doesn't even have a, a credible opponent. I mean, she's going to win with like 80%. They, the Republicans right, didn't even right. run anyone against her. No, they, they, they don't do up. that They're because like, they, they gerrymander the districts for the most part when they can control it in places like Ohio and, and um, they control the legislature in places like Michigan and Wisconsin, even if the governor you know, can, can have a say there too. But yeah, no, this is, uh, this is not, uh, atypical, unfortunately for the Republican party in the last, uh, probably the last decade or so talking with our great friend, Mark Taylor Canfield. But I want to ask you, um, do you feel as a Twitter member, as a Twitter user, and, um, you know, we, uh, we share a lot on Twitter together and, 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 and Mark has been a, a fantastic advocate for me on that uh, platform. What I what I see today with Elon Musk, you know, walking in again, it has no understanding whatever with a sink. I know that was done about a week and a half ago. Now the idea of you know we're we're going to be uh, you know throwing away the the uh, the whole sink. In other words, throw away everybody, um, emptying the sink. And but there are a lot of people who are going to lose their jobs and already have got the pink slip. In fact, this guy had the audacity to send to personal emails that you've been fired. Now, luckily, the United States, and even even more so in Europe, you have to offer somebody some kind of severance. There's a whole slew of things. So they're taking them to court. I hope they, they hold it up. I truly hope, actually, that somehow, some way, they can take this company away from him because he's not worthy uh, of, of, of owning Twitter. And if not, then I think progressives are going to have to go other places. I don't know if you saw this. I think you retweeted. They AOC has been cut in half, if not, you know, three quarters of her uh, followers are no longer there, at least of this morning. 
I mean, you know, this is this is stuff that, you know, again, borders on the big brother stuff that you and I talk about all the time. It's really disappointing. One, because I don't think that Musk really even sees it as a credible uh, uh, business venture in terms of a profit. I think he just wants to own something. It's kind of like, you know, yeah. when you're wealthy, you have to own uh, sports teams or something. Although Drew Carey owns the Seattle uh soccer team the sounders he's not unfortunately wealthy, we didn't win the nls this year dang it he's wealthy we won like but he's not bezos or 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 musk no. wealthy. it's a big difference no. yeah right and it's been a big issue for democracy watch news because we actually won some recognition a couple of years ago for being one of the top you know 100 digital influencers in the world or something when it comes to digital comes That's to digital right. media and that was largely because of Twitter, because we totally took advantage of the fact that Twitter is a, you know, 30 second breaking news story kind of platform. And we took it full advantage of that. Now we have a lot of Twitter space events where we can actually talk to people in Africa. We can talk to journalists there. We can talk to our journalists in South and Central America. And it's a really good platform for that. But we've had to have these discussions. What are we going to do? What's our plan B if it becomes an untenable situation for us? And I hope that doesn't happen because it is a good service for people, regardless of who owns it. I do see a, a problem, though. I, I've, you know, well, I've I haven't really on, thought I've been on Twitter for 10 years. So, you know, yeah, I, mean, I have, no, I have you, my own little. You're very active on Twitter. So is Harvey. Yeah, yeah, a exactly. lot of us on the show are very active and we, we rely on Twitter to share information with each other. So I'm going to miss that if we start dropping off. I think hopefully uh, Musk will get it in his head that, you know, he's chasing people away from his own product. Right. He said himself in a talk I saw on YouTube that the key to being a successful business person is charging a lot more for a service <laughs> than it costs you to create. <laughs> So he's definitely about exploitation. Yeah. I mean, that's capitalism. Yeah, to, to, he's a Republican capitalism. through and through. You know, he, he, yeah, may, so he may not necessarily that. identify himself that way, but he's, he's it just falls into the same thing. Look, I remember a 60 Minutes piece on him going back maybe 2008, 2009, just after Obama got in. So maybe like 2009, maybe even 2010. And what he basically did is he, he, he got a ton of money from uh, research and development dollars from the federal government to start, uh, you know, the whole uh, Tesla stuff and electric cars. And in my opinion, where he is right now is a, uh, a billionaire. And again, and this was a big, big issue in 2008 when, when he won. And Obama kept telling you, you know, you didn't start this all by yourself. You got a lot of help. And Musk got a lot of help from the American taxpayer. And, you know, people need to remember that. Yeah. That's probably, I guess, part of the game, too, is you try to rig it with political influence and, you know, sweet deals from the government. I mean, every yeah. wealthy person I know of tries to do that in one way or another, especially if they're billionaires. We had even Paul Allen here, you know, when he owned the Seahawks, he, he, he worked out some crazy deal with them where if the Seahawks leave, we have to pay him. What the heck? How does that happen? Oh, by the way, I have a quick sports question for you, Jeff. It's kind of silly, but I've been watching the World Series, you know, and yes. uh, it was crazy really? watching Javier with the Astros have that uh, no hitter the other night. And then last night, you know, everybody was on the edge of their seats and all the Philly fans were, were stand, oops, sorry, that was my electric guitar, were standing up, you know, all through the game. They were so psyched that the Phillies were gonna win this after, you know, how many years of not being in the series. And, you know, and I have some, I have a horse in the race because the Astros beat the Mariners, which the Mariners, really upset right. me. So right. I was like two, I two teams, damn Yankees and damn Astros. That's kind of my attitude this year. And so I, I'm sitting there watching this game, and I'm noticing. Go Phillies! Like, Go Phillies! Um, well, you know, I mean, it's, it's going to be harder now. The only, the only, the only good thing, the only good thing that if the Astros were to win, um, is that Dusty Baker, who has managed a number of teams, including the San Francisco Giants in 2002, where they were, I think, nine outs away from winning the World Series at, against the Angels, and the Angels would come back, tie it up, win, and then win in Game Seven there in Orange County, the first time the Angels ever won anything, the last time too. Um, and yeah. what, one thing that I, that I can think of is that Baker, who of course was part of the Bartman game and with the Cubs lost, you know, when they, the guy put his, out his hand to um, foul ball, the, 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 the uh, Cubs could have, could have won uh, that series, would have gone to the World Series that year probably. Um, 
in 2003. And, you know, so I just look at it and I think, all right, we have very few African-Americans playing today. Henry Aaron, Terrence Moore, great writer. We're going to try to get him on the show soon. Uh, Atlanta Constitution Journal and so forth. has talked about that. And one of the one of the things that, that Aaron said before he died was that he felt that there needs to be more and more African-American representation. Baker brought that up and uh, and before the World Series. This is not a player active. Brantley is with the Astros. He's the only African-American that was on the roster but was injured. And that's a sad state. So I'll, I'll, I'll give them that, but I don't identify Baker as an Astro. I just Major League Baseball. So there you go. Well, and Look at it that way, another Mark. Aspect, <laughs> another aspect of this, though, we were talking about this last night, is, you know, Verlander, Justin Verlander, you know, he's Cy Young Award winner to, what, two years, twice in a row. I mean, he's an amazing Hall of Fame pitcher, and he's always, I'm sorry, sucked in the World Series. So yeah, to see yeah. him actually have a good game. Right. I was like, thankfully, he finally got a decent game in the World Series. Because how many times has he been in it now? And he's always had a problem in the well, postseason. Well, he lost so twi twice like with the Tigers in 06 and 12. And then, of course, with um, he pitched for uh, the Astros in 17. Um, he, yep. uh, I think he also pitched in 19, and they lost there too. Uh, so, um, not sure if he was healthy enough in 19 though. Anyways. Yeah. So this is, is, um, I think this would have been. We're talking to uh, a real baseball fan series. here, by the way. That's Jeff right. Jeff knows That's this right. because he's a real baseball fan. He is a, a Red Sox guy all the way and knows That's his true. baseball. I'll like have my Red Sox before. jersey on, uh, next week when and the hockey. series is over. And hockey too. And Love hockey. my Bruins. Hey, hey best record the in the NHL, my friend. Best record in the NHL. They won last night too. Um, you know, big stuff. Hey, we're going to get cracking. Uh, before we, uh, I don't mean cracking in terms of we got to get going, but the cracking is going to be playing in Seattle. Uh, it, by the way, I don't know if you know this, but you got Eddie Olchuk, the great commentator from uh, NBC formerly and, and now with uh, TNT, is your home broadcaster. That's a real coup yeah. for the fans of Seattle to have that, uh, that kind of voice there. Uh, along yeah. with um, your your great play-by-play uh, -play announcer, formerly of the Hurricanes. Hey, hey, what do you say? Um, <laughs> anyways, so Seahawks doing pretty well. Uh, give us a, a few seconds before we have to roll on that. Well, you know, I was very disappointed when I heard that Russell Wilson was being traded. Now I'm not so disappointed because he's like ranked 21st in the league and Gino is ranked like 10th in the league and he's doing quite fine. The Seahawks have won the last four, I got four, four, four and one in the last, since their last, first two losses. So they're looking good in what you call the weak conference and you're right, it, you know, they can do well even with a, with a 50, you know, with a 500 percentage. So they're doing okay. They're doing hey, good. Go MVP. Gino. He's a hero. Go Gino. Thanks Gino Smith for joining us on the Santo Show, the best talk show in the country, folks. We'll see you next time. Check me out on YouTube and check out Democracy Watch News. We're, we're doing a whole new thing this year, so we're getting ready for a whole new Hey, Mark, all the best, my friend. Have yourself Thanks, a good Jeff. one. And go vote. Go Tell your friends to vote, too. Vote Murray. Go vote now. That's right. Vote. Thank, Thank you, man. I, got, I love you wearing blue, too. We got to run. We'll be right back.